Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by... By Huron Lady River Cruises in Port Huron, offering daily sightseeing trips and private cruises. Sightseers will experience the International Blue Water Bridges, Great Lakes Freighters, the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse, and more. Huron Lady River Cruises on the web at huronlady.com. Welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Olson. This week, I'm actually out on Lake St. Clair doing a musky fishing event where we honor some of our men and women that served our nation here. We'll show you how we did out here in a couple of weeks, but on today's show, Jimmy's gonna take us to another iconic fishing lake here in Michigan, and that's Houghton Lake. Well, that's right, Jenny. We are gonna start on Houghton Lake this week and spend some time with the family up there that's been fishing that lake for well over a decade. After that, we're gonna do a little natural resources news and find out what the DNR is doing on their wetland waterfowl challenge and how that affects us as sportsmen. We're also gonna sit down with the DNR and find out a little bit more about what we as anglers can do to help stop the spread of aquatic nuisance species. And if that's not enough, we're gonna have something that I don't really think of this time of the year, kind of late summer, early fall, and that is summertime coyote hunting. Yeah, that's right. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for that. It's kind of a different story. Lots of good stuff on this week's program. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes. Here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream Shining like a sportsman's dream It's the love of Michigan we all share Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. By Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping. From bug spray and tents to GPS and gas, Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Meyer by G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows. Manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan, G5 offers archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. By Country Smokehouse, offering a variety of meat products, Country Smokehouse is located three miles south of I-69 on M53, just south of Imlay City. Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen. just in time for the fish to hit the fryer a week or so back on the banks of Houghton Lake, an iconic lake here in our great state. And where are we at and what, what kind of stuff do you have here on the lake? Well, we've got three acres here. We've got uh, boat rentals, 14 footers with 15 horse motors, uh, pontoons, eight cottages, four two bedroom apartments, and a couple motel rooms in just in case you want to just sleep over one night. The summer is when we make our, our money. Okay. And the, we're open year round because we live here. But anytime anybody wants to come up, just give me a call or drop in. We'd be glad to have you. And how's the fishing been on Houghton Lake this year? Fishing's been good. Not as good as this week, but <laughs> it's been good all summer. Don has run this place for over 20 years, and half of that time, the Cumberworth family has been coming this way to enjoy a week of fishing. Well, before my wife and I um, had kids, we went to Rice Lake. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but mm -hmm. it's a nice place over by Toronto. And... She got pregnant one year, and uh, we didn't think that we wanted to drive all the way back to Canada. So we started looking up here in Michigan, and we ended up at Mullet Lake for a year or two. We rented a log cabin on the lake and uh, um, loved that, but the kids don't travel as good 
longer distances. So we um, were looking at something a little bit closer and we come across this one uh, fall um, just by chance and uh, my mom got the address and the phone number so we called it and it's right up the price range. Mm. You know, with a small family, you know, and uh, being able to go away and not have to worry about that, that's a, a very good plus. So we've been here, I bet we've been here, since we've been married 22 years, I bet we've been to Houghton Lake 10, 12 times. Wow. So, and loved every, every time. It's hard not to have a great time in a setting like this. All sorts of family around, fish in the fryer, and I felt very privileged to hang out and hear all about the fishing this family does here. Well, we've been using leeches and um, red, uh, night crawlers. Okay. And what are you fishing for? Um, anything that we can get. Yeah? Much. And what do you like about fishing here in this lake? It's just really big, and then you can, like... If you want to, you can have fun just riding your boat around, or you can just um, just keep on fishing for as long as you want. Like there's nobody to stop you. And tell me about the big fish you caught. Was that today or yesterday? Um, yesterday I caught an 18 and a half inch walleye, uh, just drifting through right up um, along the lagoon. How did he fight? Yeah, it, wa it wasn't that hard, but my hands held her afterwards. <laughs> Angie and Chris were nice enough to have me up here to see their little slice of heaven. But it was actually Tim, their 11-year-old, that first invited me. I met them at a church wild game dinner just outside of Grand Rapids, and Timmy was going on and on about how well they did fishing Houghton Lake. And he asked if I'd come on up. Well, as it turned out, I had a few days open the week that they were going to be doing their family fishing trip up here. And so here we were, drifting Houghton Lake on a windy evening, but we were catching fish. We had about three or four boats out tonight, all doing the same kind of fishing. This is a very large lake, and we've found that you can't really anchor and fish. You have to move. And uh, the easiest way for mo mobility is just drift. Just, uh, you know, you go out and drift. Trolling, there's a lot, still a lot of weeds. Trolling, you're into the weeds and you're tangled up in the weeds. You get drifting, you can work around the weeds and stuff like that. So we found that drifting is about the best way for us to fish. Hmm. And uh, we use a lot of uh, uh, crawler harnesses, um, floating jigs, uh, just run some beads with some gold hooks. You know, and you give yourself a two, three foot leader and you just weight yourself down. You know, it depends upon how, how windy it is. Um, so you get a whole lot more um, uh, fishing time when you're doing it like that. So it works really, really good for us. Nice job, young fella. Yeah! <laughs> It is really fun to see someone so excited about catching fish. Houghton Lake regs allow you to keep any size pike and only one over 24 inches. So with walleye and pike hitting our offering, we settled in for a nice little evening of fishing. Another one. Wow. 
would drift a few hundred yards, in about 12 foot of water or so, then motor back up and do the same drift again. We would occasionally run over to the other boats in our group to see how everybody was doing. The high winds were making it a little tough, but everybody was catching a few fish. And since they eat about everything they catch, the fish fry for the next day was looking pretty promising. We had a handful of pike for pickling, along with our few walleye in the boat. We had done very well. Here's a kitty pole. Walleye. The sun is setting, the walleye hit me. Yay! <laughs> That's a dandy. Yeah! Right at the last fish of the night, eh? Yes, beautiful. <laughs> That's a good walleye right there. Beautiful. It had been a beautiful day for sure. Fresh fish fry, got to meet some great folks in a corner of our state that, well, we probably all should spend a little bit more time in. Today was what we really want to promote here at Michigan Out of Doors Television, a Michigan family vacationing right here in our state, spending their time and dollars to strengthen our economy while enjoying the incredible natural resources that Michigan has to offer. It was simply pure Michigan at its finest. So this fall, our, our waterfall hunters have another opportunity to participate in what we call our Wetland Wonders Challenge. What the Wetland Wonders Challenge is, is it's a way that we're promoting our managed waterfall hunting areas. We've got seven of these areas throughout southern Michigan, three of them in Saginaw Bay. We've got the Fish Point Wildlife Area, Neonquin Point Wildlife Area, and the Shiawassee River State Game Area. In Southeast Michigan, it includes Harsons Island of the St. Clair Flats Wildlife Area, as well as the Point Mouillet State Game Area. And then over on the west side, um, in Allegan, at the Allegan State Game Area, we have our Fenville Farm Unit, and also at the Muskegon County Wastewater Facility, where our staff from the Muskegon uh, State Game Area run that managed hunt. All seven of these areas are great places to go waterfowl hunting this fall. And in fact, um, they're all some of the best places to go waterfowl hunting in the entire state. They're managed areas because we manage the hunts there, which means that you go through a draw system. You come in either the morning of, um, if you're hunting in the morning or the afternoon. You come in, you register for the hunt, you go through the draw and you select a zone. It's a way to manage the hunting there so we can manage the number of folks out there, try to provide a really high quality uh, waterfall hunting experience out there. So the Wetland Wonders Challenge is a way that we're trying to get hunters to come in and experience these areas. Um, if you haven't already, an, an open invitation to come and try them out. Or if you just haven't been there in a while or you haven't tried them all out, to come on in and check it out. So the contest, the way it works, is you come in and if you hunt at least three of these areas, then you're entered into a contest where we'll uh, select seven winners to win these really, really nice um, waterfall hunting prize packages that we've put together. They're valued at about $1,500 a piece, so they're really nice. Um, we've got a nice uh, Mossberg shotgun in the prize package, as well as some custom zinc duck and goose calls, some Avian X duck and goose decoys, and a whole bunch of other waterfall hunting gear. One of the prizes that our, winner, our past winners have really enjoyed the most is our what we call our golden ticket, which is, allows them to um, have first choice in a draw at one of these managed waterfowl hunting areas the next season. And that's been a, a pretty hot commodity for our winners to have. Um, it's a fun way to get, like I said, folks out to these areas and experience the fabulous waterfowl hunting that's out there, uh, both for ducks and geese. This uh, Wetland Wonders Challenge contest, I've got to mention, is it's uh, sponsored by Consumers Energy. They've been a generous sponsor in our Explore Michigan Wetland Wonders. And um, MUCC has also partnered with us to help us uh, conduct the, the drawing and to select the winners and award them the prizes. So I also want to mention that you have to hunt the three different areas um, in order to be eligible, in order to be entered. 
but if you hunt more than that, you can increase your chances. So if you hunt four of them, you'll be entered twice into the contest. If you, and if you hunt at five of the areas, you'd be entered um, three times into the contest. So the more you hunt, the more you move around and try out all of these areas, the more that you can increase your odds of winning one of these seven um, really, really nice prize packages. Hey, I'm Jimmy Gretzinger from Michigan Out of Doors Television. We're here today with Seth Herps from the DNR Fisheries Division, and we are going to talk about invasive species. And last time we were with you, Seth, we were talking about um, fish and what anglers can do to identify some invasives. Today we're here to talk about something different. What is it? Yep, so today we're going to be talking about another, another thing that the state is uh, definitely concerned with, which is invasive plant species. So some of uh, these invasive plant species are spread through, through boats, just like this one. People fishing in different areas, trailering, and then making their way to another, another uh, lake for fishing or any other kind of recreational opportunity that the lakes in Michigan have to offer. But when they trailer to a new lake, there's a possibility of spreading these invasive plant species. Okay, so what can we as anglers do to, to kind of help stop that spread of those invasives? So the message that we're definitely promoting is clean drain dry. So when you leave the lake, clean your boat of any vegetation, um, dry it, and then the draining of your bilge or any water that you might have within the boat. Is, as long as you're taking those three easy steps, clean, drain, dry, you should help in uh, the prevention of aquatic invasive species. Okay, and you're not looking for just a specific kind of weed, you're basically any kind of vegetation that would be on the boat. Right, so I'm sure many of uh, the viewers today are familiar with Eurasian water milfoil. But that's just one suspect in a, in a long list of invasive plant species that the state's actually concerned with. Okay, so if we see anything on our boat, we should be getting rid of that. Correct, yep. Basically, as soon as you uh, take your boat out of the water, go ahead and take those three steps, clean, drain, dry, and you should help with uh, preventing the spread of aquatic invasive plant species. So Seth, you know, as an angler, why should I even be concerned about invasives getting into you know, some of the areas that I like to fish? So as an angler, Jimmy, um, these aquatic invasive plant species will not only negatively influence the habitat that uh, is important for fish for spawning, feeding, and just nursery habitats, but when you're out there fishing um, in these dense uh, invasive plant areas, It'll actually follow up your hooks, you know, casting a lure out. Um, so it'll negatively influence not only the fish community, but your fishing experience. Well, these are some easy things that we as anglers can do. Clean, drain, dry your boat. It seems pretty simple, but I bet it really goes a long way. So Seth, Absolutely. thanks for your time today. Thanks, Jimmy. Hi, I'm Jordan Brown, and for our next segment on this week's show, I was over on the west side of the state to do a little summertime coyote hunting. For this week's show, I was in the Muskegon area to do a little coyote hunting with a guy who's gotten pretty good at it over the years and has started to like hunting during the summer more and more. He's also recently started an outdoor page aimed at anyone who likes to hunt and fish. I'm uh, 25 years old. I got three kids and my wife. Uh, they know that hunting is my passion and it's everything to me. It kind of keeps me calm down during the off season for coyotes especially. I love to deer hunt in the fall. but Overdrive Outdoors, we kind of began that because I'm just, there's so much stuff that you see nowadays with people arguing over the size of a deer somebody's taking or a fish somebody decided to keep and eat rather than return back to the lake. And we kind of wanted to start something through Michigan that uh, was a little bit different. We just, we won't allow any of the arguing. Well, we want everybody to know that, you know, however you choose to spend time in the outdoors, it should be however you want to do it. Um, as long as you're happy in the outdoors, everybody else should be happy for you as far as we see it. And that's kind of what we're trying to do with Overdrive Outdoors is just have a friendly meeting place for everybody. It doesn't have to be just in Michigan or anything. It's just everybody can get together, talk about hunting, and just have fun. One cow, baby. The landowner's going to be happy with that one. This summer, I have actually had one of my best summers uh, to speak of. I've called in seven coyotes so far that I've seen. I've actually taken four of them, and those were all on properties where a landowner's called me having problems with them, taking their animals, or I also keep in touch with the Michigan DNR, and they're telling me where people are having issues with the coyotes also. Um, 
I, this is honestly the, the year that I've actually started hunting hard during the summertime. Usually I don't get into it too much during the summer, but with my kids growing up to be an age where I can finally start to take them out, uh, my oldest son's three, my second oldest son is two, and then I've got a daughter who's one, but I want them to be able to enjoy this with me without having to freeze during the winter time like I do. That's why I really started getting into the summertime calling. It's always nice weather. My kids don't have to freeze. It's easy walking, and I don't always have to travel far from home during the summertime either. It's just, you know, after work, hey, let's go hunting, and my son packs up his stuff and gets in the car with me. Um, that's one reason why I've really started doing it during the summertime this year. Um, summertime and wintertime calling, as long as I could be out in the woods enjoying the outdoors, I'll do it however I can, whenever I can. With all of Josh's recent success in the coyote woods, we decided to tag along with him for an evening hunt in late August, hoping to break the camera jinx that we seem to have when it comes to filming coyote hunts. Today we're in a spot in Muskegon County I heard about probably nine years ago now. I used to live down this way and the DNR had told me, go out and check this area out. It's actually public land, um, but it's big crop fields um, and there's a lot of coyotes in here. I took one out of here this winter. Um, I've got another buddy that actually took one out of here a couple weeks ago and we're just going to give it a whirl. I know they're out here. It's some thick swampy areas, but as long as we can get them out in the fields, we're going we're gonna to do our best to get one on film tonight. It was a beautiful night and our first setup was on the edge of a large bean field that was surrounded by thick cover. Calling in the summer creates a bit of a different dynamic than calling in the winter. With curious pups around and protective females, coyotes can often be more responsive this time of the year than in the winter months. During the summertime, as I mentioned, pups are out and about. The females right now are really protective of their pups and males are somewhat protective of the pups, otherwise sometimes they're really territorial. So a lot of times right now, actually year round usually, I start all my sets with a howl of some sort. I don't ever use anything challenging. I use just a friendly howl that means, you know, here I am, where are you, come, come see me or I'll come see you. Um, nothing too aggressive usually, but I mean the pups right now, they haven't ever been called before. They're, they're really easy to call in. That's one reason we do it during the summer. You know, you got uneducated coyotes and more aggressive coyotes that are willing to defend territory or defend pups and they're easier to call. It's nice out. I mean, the weather's always nice, a little bit hot sometimes, but I sit out those days usually. Um, but yeah, I mean, usually 99% of the time I use howls right off the bat and then we'll do distress. Um, usually doesn't change for me too much during the winter months. Our first setup didn't pan out. So we quickly packed up and headed for another bean field, once again surrounded by thick cover. Usually coyotes like to hold up in thick brush or thick grass. We've had many times this year where people have called us saying they're seeing them in their tall hay fields when they're cutting the hay. They're just laying in there looking for mice or whatever else. Um, we always look for mainly a crosswind, otherwise, I mean, coyote uses its sense of smell to usually I'd say 80% of the time they'll circle downwind. But if you can't see and shoot your downwind side, you're going to be less effective. If, it, if your downwind side is a thick cover area and you can't see in it, you're never going to see that coyote either. So we usually try to have the wind blowing into somewhat of an open shootable area. Um, that way, if a coyote does decide to circle downwind, it presents itself for a shot before it ends up catching our scent. And I mean, almost 100% of the time, if they catch your scent, they're gone. Well, our second setup didn't pan out either. Calling coyotes is one of the toughest things that we film, and once again, luck was not on our side. Special thanks to Josh for letting me tag along on a beautiful night here in West Michigan. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Remember, stay tuned in a couple of weeks to see how we did out here on Lake St. Clair for this Veterans Fishing Day for muskies. We've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up for you over the next few weeks. You can always check out what we're up to on our website at michiganoutofdoorstv.com and on our Facebook page. Lots of ways to keep in touch online. 
Well, online is a great way to check up with us and see what we've been up to and what we've been out shooting here in the great state of Michigan. It is a busy time of the year as we get into the fall here. Now that we're into September, the early goose season is going, so we're going to have that for you. We still have lots of good summertime, kind of early fall fishing that's going to be happening. Bear season's not too far away. We're a couple of weeks from the small game season. Deer season, the youth season's only a couple of weeks away, and then bow hunting, less than a month away. So lots of stuff happening right now in the state of Michigan, so make sure you join us over the next few weeks here on your PBS station. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by, by Rosie Brothers. Located in Dryden, Michigan, Rosie Brothers has been serving Michigan for over 40 years. Specializing in outdoor needs, Rosie Brothers features Kubota tractors and equipment for use in farm, home, or commercial needs. On the web at rosiebrosinc.com. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore with its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses. Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. By Propane, exceptional energy. Propane retailers promote the safe use of Michigan-produced gas energy in homes, farms, and businesses across our great state. Learn more at usemichiganpropane.com. By Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping. From bug spray and tents to GPS and gas, Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Meyer. Closed captioning is brought to you by Propane Exceptional Energy. Propane retailers promote the safe use of Michigan produced gas to outdoor enthusiasts across our great state. When I want a far away stays with me night and day it's the road that leads to my home state i am a michigan man changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream the white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees i am a michigan man i am i am a michigan man that's where i'm from and i'll show you my hands lord above i love this land i St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again. I am a Michigan man. I am